everybody. So it's story time with Steving. I love that. Story time with Steving. It just rolls off the tongue so well. Story time with Steving. So, okay. So I was just. So, yeah. It's story time with Steving. Okay. So I was just sitting here thinking. I've always wanted to document my life. It's one of the reasons why I make this 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 little show is because I like to document my life. And it reminded me of when I was a kid, I was maybe eight or nine or so, and I would there's my guy. Is he gonna buy Grizzly? Grizzly? Dude, I got Grizzly. I got Grizzly, come get some. Well, I used to walk around with a tape recorder. Right? And it was always recording. Because even as an eight-year-old kid, nine-year-old kid, I wanted to document my life. No idea why. I just did. And so I did. I recorded it. And, I, and then I was thinking, you know, if I could record video all the time, I would literally, I would, t I would record video every moment of my life, and then I would go back and edit it later. I would, I would literally make a reality show, the Steving show, and it would be like what life looks like for a man who walks with God and talks to him every day and walks by his ways. That would be the premise of my show, and I would make it. I would. I would make a reality show. I think I've learned enough about, you know, editing and stuff. I would totally, I would make a reality show um, of my life. Coffee. And it would be awesome. Gone away is the new bird. Here to stay is the new bird. We'll sing a love song as we go along. Walking in winter wonderland. In the meadow we can build a snowman. And pretend that he is Parson Brown. He'll say, oh, you're married. We'll say, no, man. But you can do the job in your town. Later on, we'll conspire. As we dream by the fire. The same little brave plans that we've made. Walking in a winter wonderland. Walking in a winter wonderland. Gas station log. Hey everybody, it's 3.30. Okay, so I found another verse. It's Colossians 2, um, verse 8, but I want to read from verse 4 because apparently there was some, literally my Bible says, heresy. So there was some heretical ideas floating around. Gee, I really wish Paul could be here in today's world so he could try to set the record straight on heresy that we have to contend with. But, um, verse 4, I am saying this so that no one will deceive you with arguments that sound reasonable. Because that takes discernment. To not be deceived with arguments that sound reasonable. Somebody makes a case to you, oh, that sounds reasonable, sure, okay, I'll go along with that. It's because there's no discernment. Discernment is the ability to tell the difference between what is right and what is almost right. A lot of things sound reasonable. That doesn't make mean that they're right. All right, so, Verse 5, For I may be absent in body, but I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see how well ordered you are and the strength of your faith in Christ. So that's good. Verse 6, So then, just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, being rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught and overflowing with gratitude. Yay! And I want, I want to say about verse 6, it says that, or verse 7, it says that we have received Christ and we live in him. We were rooted and built up in him. How many people can honestly say that? We need to be rooted in Christ. 
sadly, I think a lot of people know about Christ. They know what the Bible says about Christ. They try to be true to the Bible, but they don't have a working relationship with him. I'm just going to tell you straight up. If you are a Christian and you do not hear from God, something is wrong. God wants to be known because he wants to have a re personal relationship with you. A lot of people confuse that for I know about God. But if but they but but but, but many people will stand before Jesus on the last day and say, "But Lord, I did all these things in your name." And he said, "But yeah, but I didn't know you." Where were you when I tried to have a relationship with you? Is what, I mean, that's what it gets, that's what it comes down to. Jesus, the Lord God, wants to be known by people. By his people. And so many people try to establish an understanding of doctrine in their head without knowing him. If you don't know him, and listen to him when he speaks to you, there's so much change and growth that just will never happen. So many people hear from God all the time and they dismiss it because they either don't realize it's from God or they don't think it's from God or they think it's something else. And a lot of people are stubborn. It's okay, we're all stubborn about something. They don't want to, they, they, they want to be unmoving and unchanging, and God is like, okay, well, fine, then, you know, be like that. So, okay, anyway, overflowing with gratitude, verse 8, be careful that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit based on human tradition, based on the elements of the world rather than Christ, for the entire fullness of God's nature dwells bodily in Christ. Okay, so basically, be careful that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit and on human traditions. God did not say, let there be Christmas. And all it takes is for us to study history. The Romans basically went into all of Europe and all the primitive barbarian people that they found and they were like well okay you guys you know you want to you know celebrate your yule weird christmas tra they all had these weird winter solstice traditions right that often involved child sacrifice and divination and you know stuff like that so um so basically the Romans were like, okay, so you want to have your Yule, and you want to have your, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah thing. It became a human tradition. But we already know that back in Deuteronomy, the Lord basically said, I don't want you to assimilate pagan worship styles or the worship of pagan gods and repurpose it to worship me. The Lord has already said that. And so the Roman Empire, the Holy Roman Empire, the Catholic Church, whatever, was wrong to create Christmas. Because the Lord did not establish any holiday for us to celebrate in the winter, at least not like that, we are basically, um, we have basically taken Jesus and pinned him to a pagan practice and we say that it's Christian. But it really isn't because the only reason that Jesus is pinned to it is because we wanted to celebrate a time of year when Jesus was not born, but we were going to pretend that he was. And the whole thing, there's no truth in it anyway. So, why even practice it? Yes, yes, I know. It's been going on for, for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, I believe that, that Christmas has been a holiday practiced for at least 1,800 years now. Maybe 1,900 years. 
Um, so, okay, so who wants to argue with tradition? Well, I mean, maybe a lot of you don't, but, you know, I do. I'm just, I'm one of those people, I'm not afraid to stare tradition in the face and punk it out. Like, I just don't care. <laughs> so, you know, if, if the Holy Spirit moves in your heart um, to reconsider your Christmas tradition, well, then by all means, let him. But you should listen to him if he does. And if not, okay, it's no big deal. Like, I didn't want you guys to think that I'm like, you're going to hell for practicing Christmas. Um, I'm not saying that at all. And, and I know a buddy of mine, James Pointer, made a really good point that I want to speak on for a second. Because he actually spoke to something that, that is kin to my heart as well. He was basically like, with all the fighting and all the wars on doctrine and, and stuff like that, that that's out there in the world, why split hairs over Christmas? Because it isn't really me choosing to split hairs over Christmas. The Holy Spirit convicted my heart and said these hairs are worth splitting. So, yeah, it, it isn't really me choosing to split hairs over the issue. This is something that God put on my heart, and I feel like I would be negligent in my duty to serving other believers if I didn't at least put it out there and say, hmm, you might want to consider this. Um, but I do understand, because I'm also very frustrated with the fact that Christians are shooting each other and warring with each other over doctrinal issues that I'm really not sure they matter. Some of them do, but there's too much fighting and division in the church and not enough unity and people coming together to actually do the work of Jesus. You know, helping the marginalized, feeding the hungry, um, housing the homeless. Because I, because that that's huge on my heart. Like that, that I wish that people could just come together, set aside their differences, come together in unity for that purpose. So I do totally relate to that. Yeah. So like, I I definitely feel the weight of that. I wish Christians, like, dude, we we live in such a jacked up place that even Christians are jacked up people. And, like, the church, the way the church functions is jacked up. And it's a good thing that God has a lot of grace to go around because we all need it. Gas station log. Hey, everybody. It is 6.05. The day is finally starting to wind up. Or wind down. Or wrap up. That's what I'm looking for. The day is finally starting to wrap up. Something is going on in Haiti. I'm not exactly sure. I messaged my buddy in Haiti um, to uh, see if he could give me any more insight, what was actually going on, something about Christian persecution. I don't know. My mom, my mother um, from Illinois sent me a message. It was one of those chain letters, and it was from Joyce Meyer. Not sure how I feel about that. <clears throat> but uh, anyway... Um, something about, like, Hindus are rising up against Christians, and churches are being burned, and Christians are in hiding, and I tried to Google the information, see if there was anything in the news, and the only thing I could get was Christianity is the third largest religion in India. So, I don't really have any solid information on what's going on, but that's pretty sad. I suspect that it's only going to get worse and more widespread um, because that's what's supposed to happen. Um, and I, for one, just want to get it over with. I'm like, okay, Jesus, if, this, if all these things must happen, then let's get it over with. And I literally, I was having a conversation with Jesus earlier today. And um, basically, he explained to me that we need to start making sure that we are ready to die well. Um, because life as a Christian is not cake and roses. It's not supposed to be. We are supposed to be set apart from this world. Time is coming, my friends, when the world will turn its back on us. It will reject us because it rejects him who sent us, who has called us out of the world. Um, as I was saying earlier, 
God found Abraham and he said, I'm going to pull you out of your influence and I am going to set you to a life with me. It'll be full of excitement and adventure and fulfillment and it'll be a crazy wild ride. Let's go do this thing, right? Many Christians over the centuries have been able to enjoy full and rich lives and we still may live full and rich lives but they may not end well. Well, no, because that's where we need to understand what it means to end well. Dying in your sleep with your family around you is, is a pretty good way to end your life, but dying at the hands of those who hate you because you are unwilling to, be, to waver or compromise and you are unwavering in your faith and dedication to your God is another way. The Klingons would say you died with glory and honor. And in the end, God may require us to die with glory and honor. His glory. Because that day is coming. And maybe it's already here. Gas station log. It is 7 o'clock. And final thoughts for the day. I want to leave you guys with this thought. Sometimes when I get on Facebook and I make posts... It doesn't always come across very well and some t and, and, and sometimes people actually take offense where no offense was intended but I have come to know the heart of God and I know that God corrects those whom he loves and so whenever God corrects me, and trust me, he does, oh, he does, I know that he's doing it because he loves me. And, and, and I receive it that way. I'm like, yay, Jesus, thank you for correcting me. I know that you love me, and that's proof that you love me. So when I get on Facebook and I try to tell people about something that God has convicted my heart of, because again, God is not double-minded. If something is true for me, it's true for everybody. And I just want to share the conviction of my heart with others. And so when I get on Facebook and I make posts where, and where it sounds like I'm correcting people, I do it out of love because I know that correction comes from people that love you because correction comes from the God who loves you and he corrects you because he loves you and so it's one of the ways that I show that I love you people is because I give you correction so just remember God doesn't judge us he at least not yet he doesn't condemn us he wants to forgive us and he wants us to repent of things and I know that I can't change people's heart. I can only lay the foundation so that the Holy Spirit can come in and change people's hearts. Only the Holy Spirit can convict, put convictions on your heart. He, only the Holy Spirit can change your heart. And only the Holy Spirit can convict you of sin. Um, that's, my that's not my job, and I can't even do that. I mean, I can point things out, and believe me, I will but when you ask questions and poke the thing I think you want to know more about it and the only reason that I replied to anybody's comments on that post was because I wanted to try and explain my position a little bit better you know clearly if you say something like that people are gonna have questions and I just did my best to try to answer people's questions because if you cannot contend and defend the faith, what are you doing? And if you have a conviction in your heart, which, granted, I haven't completely figured it out yet. I just know that it's there, and, you know, and, and that's the fun of it. I get to research it. Um, I'm having to put together a scriptural basis for it. 
you know, and, and that is how I will come out of this thing on top, knowing what I believe and why. No hard feelings. It's just I want the be I want God's best for God's people. That's why I'm here on this earth. Much love to everybody. So good night. God bless. Grace and peace to you all. Jesus loves you. Have a good night. Thank you.